Now we turn to one of the president's top cabinet members who's been under fire himself, EPA Administrator Scott Pruitt. His appearances before two House committees today were ostensibly about budget matters, but lawmakers put him on the hot seat for all sorts of other reasons. In a moment, Jeffrey Brown talks with Lisa Desjardins about the politics and the policy at issue. Uh, but we begin with Lisa's look at Pruitt's day on Capitol Hill. Long a lightning rod on environmental policy, this was EPA Chief Scott Pruitt's first chance to address a recent slew of scandals with Congress. He insisted they were distractions and he has nothing to hide. And I'm here and I welcome the chance to be here to set the record straight in these areas. But let's have no illusions about what was really going on here. Those who have attacked the EPA and attacked me are doing so because they want to attack and derail the president's agenda and undermine this administration's priorities. Pruitt is under at least 10 investigations, one questioning large raises for two staffers, several on spending for personal security, luxury travel, and thousands on office upgrades, another about his $50 a night lease of a condo from the wife of an energy lobbyist, and retribution questions. Some EPA employees who criticize the spending have reportedly been demoted or forced to change jobs. But Republicans the on the committee, like Greg Harper, largely defended Pruitt by letting him employees. defend himself. Will you explain these uh, allegations and tell us what steps EPA takes to investigate allegations brought forward by EPA employees? First, there's no truth to uh, the, the assertion that uh, decisions have been made about reassignment or otherwise as far as employment status based upon the things that you reference. From retribution to favoritism, Democrat Paul Tonko pressed Pruitt on large raises for two longtime aides. This is your opportunity to set the record straight. Pruitt denied approving the raises in a Fox News interview this month, but staffers and emails have indicated otherwise. Today, Pruitt implied he did know. I was not aware of the amount, nor was I. Not the amount. Were you aware of the raises? Not aware of the amount. Well, then I'm concerned that you have no idea of what is going on in your name at your agency. Democrat Peter Welsh pressed Pruitt on his $43,000 soundproof phone booth for classified calls. Pruitt said he asked for the booth, but never approved that much spending. They're not right close to my office. Pardon me? They're not right close to my office. Well, is how often do you have to use your secret phone booth? It's for confidential communications, and it's rare. Okay, so on those rare occasions, is it too much to ask you to walk whatever distance it takes for you to get to that I guess it depends line? on the nature of the call and how urgent the call is. But the point is that you have two locations that you can go to when you have to make those rare, secure phone calls. This is taxpayer money. It's taxpayer money. Many Republicans thanked Pruitt for rolling back regulations they see as onerous. Several criticized Democrats' questions. If you can't debate the policies in Washington, you attack the personality. And that's what's happening to you. Maybe you could allow There were policy power. questions, including oh, about a rule Pruitt proposed this week that would require scientists to turn over their raw data in pertinent studies. Democrats say much of that data is confidential medical and personal information. Republican Kevin Kramer defended the idea. They're not asking for personal data. We're asking simply for the science to be revealed. It is, I mean, you can protect personal data, right? Both, both the personal data, Congressman, as well as confidential business information. President Trump has trumpeted his support for Pruitt in the past, especially his deregulation efforts. But the White House has been more cautious lately. Yesterday, Press Secretary Sarah Huckabee Sanders indicated the administration takes the Pruitt questions seriously. Again, we're evaluating these concerns and we expect the EPA administrator to answer for them. In today's hearing, retiring Republican House member Ryan Costello said the answers so far are not enough. I've reviewed your answers and I find some of them lacking uh, or insufficient. And I believe you've demonstrated or you've not demonstrated the requisite degree of good judgment required of an appointed executive branch official on some of these spending items. The subcommittee has adjourned. Pruitt today insisted most spending decisions were made for security reasons or without his specific knowledge. During the afternoon, Scott Pruitt appeared before a second committee, and once again, he made few concessions about the decisions in question. The day was seen by many as a pivotal moment for his future, and Lisa Desjardins joins me now. 
I want to talk first about environmental policy, right, which was clearly part of that. Lurking in the background is the question of how much change Scott Pruitt has, has brought there. He's brought significant change. He has 22 major deregulatory actions that he's overseen. Some of the biggies on that, Jeff, the waters of the U.S. That's something that Congress helped roll back, and it's a, it was a huge piece of kind of water environmental law from the Obama presidency, which is now pushed back five years. In addition, the Clean Power Plan is something that is, it was repealed and he's looked into. Um, but I think there are real questions about how long all of these actions will last because they have happened so quickly. Many are facing serious court challenges. There are other things like fuel efficiency that he has decided now. He's getting pushed back all over the place. That's right. From conservatives, he is getting support. But in the courts, there are real questions. You, you referred in your piece to a proposed rule re recently, mm -hmm. right, uh, that he put forward requiring science to turn over raw data for studies. He refers to this as transparency in science. Right. He also likes to talk about secret science. Yeah. This is a rule that he uh, put on the table two days ago, and it is incredibly significant. What this rule would mean is that any, uh, the, the phrasing is pivotal regulatory science, that is science that the administration uses to base new rules on, uh, must have all the data made public. Yeah. The now, raw data. The raw data. Yeah. He says that scientists haven't been transparent. and. This is a man who says you can't trust scientists. He thinks they have an agenda. He wants to get down to the facts, he says. However, critics point out there are many problems with this. One, that not only would this mean fewer studies because they rely on confidential data, but it would mean fewer regulations. And that's what critics say is the real agenda here. Look at who supports this rule. Mm -hmm. You're looking at the fossil fuel agency uh, industry, and you're looking also at um, conservatives in general who have business interests. And critics say that that's a real factor. Now, can they make this? Can they just mask this data, as Pruitt suggested in the piece? Scientists say no. This is a time when data itself is a huge commodity, and there will be computer programmers figuring out how to get it. But this does go to a much larger question about this administration and its relationship to science and scientists, clearly, right? That's absolutely right. This is a man who says he who does not trust science, and he's someone who, who thinks that he is a lawyer. He is not a science. Mm -hmm. And he says it just needs to be more of a business level. Like um, uh, agency. Now, while everybody was watching that hearing, what about the president and the White yeah. House at this point? What what signals are they sending about Scott Pruitt's future? I'm, I'm watching my Twitter feed right now yeah. <laughs> to see. You know, it is it is significant that this is one of the president's first nominees. This is probably the cabinet member that he says the most positive things about because of those regulations. Because of these regulations, about, and, and because he hears when he goes out to you know the rest of the country from Trump supporters that they love this man. Now, but it's significant that with all those factors, the White House is this week being very cautious and waiting to see how the cards play. You know, I, I think they just aren't sure with all of these investigations if this is someone that they can support long, t long term and day to day. We just don't know. Well, so on this day, yeah. you look at the hearing, you, th you think about what you just said with the president. Mm -hmm weighing the various many possible questions and scandals, yeah. weighing the policy question, yeah. what picture emerged? Watching these many hours of hearings today, Jeff, this was a man who was very poised. He answered questions politely. But this was also a man who repeatedly, when asked about these many investigations, never took personal responsibility for any of the elements in them. He repeatedly said these were staff errors. Um, occasionally, he did say that he's made changes. For instance, with his travel, he no longer makes, takes first-class flights. Mm -hmm. But he has said that he did that originally because of a security recommendation. Again, he does not feel personally responsible for these problems. Instead, this is a man who feels he's under attack, and he says it's political. His critics say he's the political one launching the attack. But you're watching this minute by minute, but <clears throat> certainly right. day by day on some, some for next action. That's right. I think for the next few weeks. Now, Congress is gone next week, mm -hmm. so that helps him out to some degree. There won't be ricocheting opinion for the, for, the for the time being, but there will be more investigative reports coming out. All right, more to come. Lisa Desjardins, thank you. My pleasure.